Ah, Lord, there's nobody in this cafe right now. Just me and you. And Lord, I just got to be real with you. I feel so empty. Lord, I want to be able to give something fresh to the kids. I mean, this is chapel number five. I mean, oh, that's true. It says, let's be real. So I'm being real right now with you, Lord. I need a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit to be able to give out to these kids today. Lord, I need you. Every moment, every hour, I need you. Lord God, have your way in this chapel today. Amen. I was looking through my Bible, just reading in the book of Genesis. That's the first book. And in that book, it says uh, about creation and, and what happened, where sin came from, right? So I got to Genesis 127. 1 verse 27 says so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them now I don't see any other thing that God created in his image except for man and woman I wonder how he created them so as I kept reading and I went to Genesis 2 let me find that place Genesis 2, and I went to verse number 7, and it says, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Wow, that's like being handmade. Formed him from the dust of the ground and then breathed his very own breath into him to make him alive. And man must be very special to God, right? And in fact, I read a little farther and it was Genesis 2.19, and it says here, hmm, Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. God let Adam name the creatures he created? Wow, they must have had a very good relationship with one another. Well, as you know, God gave a rule to Adam and Eve. And he said to him in verse 16 of chapter 2, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You must surely eat you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Oh, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Well, as you know what happened, they did disobey, but they didn't die. They had to leave the garden. But before they left the garden, God sacrificed an animal and covered them with animal skins. And he also promised that one day he would send a Savior. That's in Genesis 3.15. Now, we've been learning some hand motions that could tell that story so you could share it with somebody else. So, let's practice them. In the beginning, God created man in his image. Man walked and talked with God in the garden. Along came Satan, and man fell into sin. Sin separated man from God. But God didn't leave him there. He promised that one day he would send a Savior. There are some picture cards that also say the same thing. In the beginning, God created man in his image. Man walked and talked with God in the garden. Along came Satan, and man fell into sin. That sin separated man from God. But God didn't leave him there. He promised that one day he would send 
a savior. Well, Adam and Eve were separated from God because of their sin. And we too have a sinful nature, the same that Adam and Eve had. So we're separated too. And that relationship, that friendship needs to be restored. And how will it be restored? By our Savior. That's right. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of God. He came from heaven to earth. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He rose from the dead. He's in heaven now, preparing a place for us. A is for admit you are a sinner. B is believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. C is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah! My favorite TV show is coming on soon, and Mom says I can watch it as soon as I get my homework done. Oh, it takes me forever to get all this math done. Psst, just hide in your folder. You don't want to miss your show. Who said that? You have most of it done. You can finish it in the morning. Your mom won't know. That's an idea. What does the word say? What does it say? It's almost 7.30 now. You're going to miss it. I remember children obey your parents in the Lord. I hear the clock ticking. Tick, tick. This is hard. I want to see my show. What does the rest of the verse say? Help me, Lord. I need to do what's right. Oh, that's the part of the verse. I need to do what's right. But your show. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. This, for this is right. With God's help, I am going to obey my parents and do what is right. Sally, I have two cookies here for you and Kamani as a treat. Kamani is coming, isn't he? Oh, yes. I'm sure he will be here soon. Mmm. These cookies look like chocolate chips. They are. And make sure you save one for Kamani. I will. They sure do smell good. I guess I could eat mine now, since it's taking Kamani so long to get here. Ah, that was good. I'm still hungry. Maybe Kamani's not coming. I think this cookie is bigger than the one I ate. I am going to break off a little piece to make it even. Whoops, that's a little bigger than I wanted to take. I can't give him a broken cookie. Hi, Sally. Sorry I was late, but my mom had a chore for me to do. Are you okay? You're acting kind of funny. I'm just thirsty. I'll ask Miss Pat for a cup of cold water. Oh, don't do that. What's today's dessert special? Dessert? Did you say dessert? Do you have something to tell me? I need to confess. Isn't that in the dessert? It was, but I ate it. I am sad you ate my chocolate chip cookie. But I'm glad you told me the truth. Learning 1 John 1, 9 helps me remember what to do when I sin. I am so sorry that I ate your cookie. I owe you one. I will take you up on it. The next day, Sally gave Kamani the only cookie that was packed in her lunchbox to make up for the one she ate of his in the cafe. The day before. C 
Sally was lying about saving a cookie for Kamani, and then she stole the cookie and ate it. She confessed her sins to Jesus, and his blood washed away her sins. And made her white as snow. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood, would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The big word in our Bible verse today is confess. This word can mean several different things, but for our Bible verse, it means to confess our sins. Sometimes we say, all right, come on, fess up. That means tell us what you did. God the Holy Spirit comes to you in your heart and reminds you of your sins. Let's say that you already know that Jesus is the only one who can take away your sins, but you haven't allowed him to do that yet. So finally you admit that you are a sinner and that you need Jesus to save you, to forgive your sins. Sometimes we call that the ABCs. You admit that you are a sinner you believe that Jesus can save you, and only Jesus, and you confess that Jesus is your Lord. He forgives you and brings you into his family. So here's our Bible verse. This starts with 1 John 1, 9, if we. And then there's just a picture. And this little boy is confessing. Okay, so if we confess our sins, and it gives you some examples there of sins, right? He, that means God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse means he makes us clean and unrighteousness is a big word that also means sin. Okay? So, let's say it together. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we saw that we confess our sins for salvation. But once we get saved, we don't become perfect in that moment. We still sin and our hearts still get dirty. So now we need to confess our sins for growing in Jesus. God forgave us and made us completely clean, but we still get dirty with sins. God wants us to be honest with him about our sins and confess them to him. ASAP. Do you know what that means? It means as soon as possible. Don't carry your sins around you for days and days not wanting to confess them. This verse that we have learned can be used for both part, both types of confessing our sins, for salvation and for growing. Let's say it again. 1 John 1, 9. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's not easy to confess when you sin like Sally did when she ate Kamani's cookie. Remember, God already knows when we are even going to sin, and still he loves us. We need to admit when we do sin to keep a close walk with Jesus. He understands us. He became one of us. But he lived a perfect life so that he could take our punishment for sin. So let's ask Jesus to help us always turn to him when we do sin, not try to hide it. He will forgive us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that he understands us because he was human too. Lord God, help us to go to Jesus and tell on ourselves when we do wrong. We know that he will forgive us and help us to do what's right. Lord, we thank you for the, the Holy Spirit that we can ask for help, and he will help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.